Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals but without all the voodoo. I am once again at Head Audio headquarters in Berlin for my first video to show you guys some stuff that I wouldn't be able to show you otherwise. As always, first of all, I've got a link to the playlist in the card if you want to check out the rest of the videos that we're making as part of this collaboration with Head Audio. And if you're interested in buying speakers, in particular head audio speakers, I've got a link for you in the description. If you buy it through that link, you will support me in what I do and obviously head audio as well. So if that's something you're considering, please have a look at the link in the description. So in this video, I want to talk to you about phase compensation, phase linearization, time in general when it comes to speakers. This is a somewhat complicated topic. It's not as easy to understand, but I want to make it as easy for you as possible. Because that's, it's an aspect that is very important to acoustics on the one side, but, and speaker design I guess as well, but in general to how you work, how you hear. It's one of those kind of fundamental topics at the very base of the work that we do. Um, but it's, it's somewhat difficult to grasp. But with a head audio speaker, I can show you how phase compensation, phase linearization works in practice. And that's what I want to show you today. So let's take a step back and just have a look at what phase means in the first place, because it's not that easy to understand, right? The first difference we need to make is that when we're talking about speakers, we're talking about the phase relationship between different frequencies coming out of the speaker, right? So this isn't like the phase difference between two sound sources, yeah? typically two speakers, and we're saying, okay, how long is one speaker or a frequency in one speaker delayed against a frequency in another speaker? This is different. Well, now we're talking about simply how much the frequencies are delayed in relation to each other. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing to understand. With a typical speaker, all the frequencies, well, they don't leave the speaker at the same time. That's the funny thing, right? You would imagine that or you would expect that the speaker kind of plays the entire bandwidth of frequencies that it can play all at the same time so that they arrive at your ear, at your listening position at the same moment. But that's not the case. In fact, the high frequencies leave the speaker first and then the mids leave the speaker and the lowest are last, all right? A better way or an easy way to imagine this if you, is if you think about a dog race or a horse race, okay? So you've got this, the starting line and you've got these kind of cages, I guess, these compartments with those doors that open automatically, yeah, at the start, starting line. And just imagine what would happen if all those doors and all the kind of dogs or the horses racing, which all stand for different parts of the frequency spectrum, if they all leave the starting line at a different time, right? So the doors to that race, they don't all open at the same time, but certain parts of them open first and then kind of the next batch opens and then the next batch opens, okay? That's how it is with frequencies and speakers. So obviously what we'd like is for all of those dogs, all the horses, to start be able to start the race at the same time. In the speaker world, we want all the frequencies to leave the speaker at the same time. And that's what phase compensation is about. That's what phase linearization is all about. So what effect does that have while we're working? Well, imagine the sound not arriving at the listening position at your ears at the same time, in particular from both speakers, okay? So obviously the sound stage that gets created between the speakers is dependent on the arrival times of the frequencies from these two speakers. Things, or rather elements in the mix that we want to have in the middle they need to, the, the sound for those elements need to arrive exactly at the same time. That's how our brain tells whether that element is actually in the middle of our stereo field. 
So if those frequencies are delayed against each other, so inside one speaker, certain high frequencies come leave the speaker first, but the mids come out later. Just imagine how our brain then isn't really capable of precisely telling where that element sits in the stereo field, in the sound stage, right? So basically the, the effect of this time smearing, this phase smearing is a lack of detail. You can't, our brains aren't exactly able to, to pinpoint where things are, right? So that's the first thing. The other is transience dynamics, right? So obviously a, a let's say a kick drum, for example, or a bass note, yeah, that's, it's not just one frequency. That's a whole bunch of frequencies altogether. It's a complex sound, but we want that sound to arrive at us, at our ears, at exactly the, the same time. Yeah? I mean, we want that kick drum to be represented by the speaker as it actually is in the wave file, in the sound. And, but if the, if the speaker smears apart those frequencies, if you just pull those, pulls those apart, imagine what that does to our ability to tell how, how and when exactly that kick drum happens. So linearizing phase or compensating for phase is a very subtle but kind of deep going effect. It has, a, has a, an effect, a positive benefit, a positive effect on a lot of different aspects of us being able to hear our speakers. In practice, it's a very, very revealing, very pleasant thing to experience. And once you get to know what a phase compensated sound image sounds like, you really don't want to do with that. So with that said, let's have a look at what that looks like in the head type 20, because the head type 20, and to be honest, the entire head series has phase compensation built in. You can switch it off with a switch, but it's basically built into the speaker. And so we can really easily demonstrate the difference between a compensated and a not compensated speaker with the head series of speakers. So let's have a look. I'm just going to be using the left speaker. We've got the microphone set up at the listening position. And I'm going to be using a software called Smart, which does real-time FFT analysis using pink noise. It's a bit more, better suited to showing phase relationships and timing aspects of the entire measurements than Rumi Q Wizard is. So uh, that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, so let's start the first measurement. This is just a standard speaker measurement, if you will, so without the linearizer engaged. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the first thing to note is that I compensated for the, the time delay that the measurement system includes in the measurement. And at the moment, we're set at around five milliseconds. That's just something to keep in mind as we move forward. But now let's look at the actual phase response. And the first thing to understand here is that this shows us time but expressed as an angle. So we've got zero degrees here in the middle and then it goes to plus 80 degrees, minus 80 degrees in the vertical axis. In the horizontal axis, we've got frequency, high frequencies, mid frequencies, low frequencies. And the interesting thing is with how phase is represented in this data, in this measurement, that there's no absolute starting point, the, the way to tell which frequency leaves the speaker first, aka which door to the dog race opens first, is by looking at the lowest point in this phase plot. And that's right at the top here, right? So this is actually the lowest point in this phase representation. It is the first part of the spectrum that arrives at the listening position. And then as we go down in frequency, 
the, uh, the frequencies are delayed further and further because we're looking at this time expressed in degrees as a function of wavelength. We've got this wraparound, it basically continues up. Yeah, you can imagine that it just continues up, but we, to express it or to show it in this one plot, it, it jumps down and it continues up. There's a, a, a mismatch here, that's because of a sidewall reflection in this room. So we can just ignore that for the time being. The point is that it continues going up, going up, being delayed further and further and further. Okay, so high frequencies arrive at the microphone first. And then as we go down in frequency, lower and lower, the frequencies are further and further delayed. Yeah? This is typical of any type of standard speaker, either two-way, three-way system. This is a function of how the speaker is built. So the drivers, but mainly also the electronics behind it. So the, the crossovers and how those are managed is mainly what determines this plot. The great thing is with the head speaker is that we can now engage the linearizer and compensate for this so that the frequencies all leave the speaker at the same time. Let's do that now. So let's turn the speaker around, show you how easily that is done on the head type 20. So at the top here, we have this toggle switch, if you will, for the linearizer. It's currently set to off and I can just switch that to on and the DSP will internally recalibrate the speaker for phase compensation and any time delay that it needs to do that. And I'll show that to you in a second what that looks like. So that's it. That's all it takes. Let's turn this back and take another measurement. All right, time for the second measurement. I'm going to just disable that one so we don't have to look at it. Okay, so already we can tell this looks a whole lot different. I'm going to switch on the non-compensated version to have that in the background. So, first of all, obviously the only way to really compensate for the fact that low frequencies leave the speaker later in its natural uncompensated state is that we have to delay the high frequencies until the point where the lows actually exit the speaker and then kind of unleash them. So in order to do that, the speaker needs to be able to delay the entire signal. And that's what we're seeing right here. If you remember, we had about a five millisecond delay before. Now it's up to about 20, 21 milliseconds. Okay, so there's an added 15, 16 milliseconds to the response in order to allow for this phase compensation. But with that in place, we now see that the phase is basically linear, almost down to the lowest frequencies, basically down to maybe 80, 100 hertz, yeah, right about there. You could obviously also compensate for the phase at even lower frequencies, but in order to do that, we would need to delay the entire signal in the speaker even further, give us even more time buffer, if you will. So this is a compromise. We're not compensating for the lowest frequencies. We're starting the compensation at about 80 hertz and upwards. Yeah? But from there on out, the phase is basically linear all the way to the highest frequencies. Yeah? It's a very easy way to get this type of phase compensation. Okay, so in summary, I hope that gives you an idea of what phase compensation, phase linearization actually is in practice and what benefit it has for you in your studio and how easy it is to actually get phase linearization with the head type 20 speaker. Now to finish off, I've got a brand new free course that you can get at the link in the description. This is my video course on the Phantom speaker test, how to set up your speakers correctly, no matter what room you're in, depending on what type of room you're in, it can be very difficult to figure out where to set up exactly. 
facing that wall, facing this wall, how far away from the wall, where, where do you position your speakers exactly, how do you make sure you get this right from the start. That's what the Phantom Speaker Test is all about. So again, if you're setting up a new studio, if you're wondering where to position your setup, you want to make sure you get, it, get that right, you can get access to my free course on the Phantom Speaker Test at the link in the description. So with that, Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was insightful. As always, let's keep learning to trust our ears, get back to having fun working on music in the studio, and I'll see you in the next video.